I made a video a while back about modding my M1 MacBook Air, and since then it's got a lot of attention, some positive, some negative, some controversial as well. So in today's video, it's been almost six months since I initially modded this machine. So I wanted to make a video talking about my findings, my recommendations, and if I thought it was worth it. And in some scenarios, I was actually able to outperform the M1 MacBook Pro, which is several hundred dollars more expensive than this base model M1 MacBook Air. Thanks to Exta for sponsoring this video. Exta is the world's largest smart wallet brand. Their leather wallets are made from premium leather and features RFID protection. A quick card access mechanism means that any card you need is at your fingertips. If you're more of a minimalist, the aluminum or MagSafe card holder might be for you. Exta also has their own slim wallet tracker. The tracker allows you to track your wallet worldwide, is voice activated and solar powered. Check out the link in the description below for more. So quick background information, if you aren't familiar with the mod itself, it's essentially a thermal mod. And all you have to do is take off the back covering of the Mac, apply some thermal pads to the CPU and GPU heatsink, ensuring to make contact with the back metal chassis. And from there, you can get anywhere from five to 20% performance gains in some tasks. At the cost, of course, of the back of the case heating up a lot more than it usually would. By the way, I'll have all the links down below to my original video and also a video showing you guys how to do it if you are interested. Quick disclaimer, it may very well void your warranty and the bottom of the case will get very hot. So proceed with caution if you are still interested. So let's start with heat. After six months, what are my experiences? How hot does it get and is it uncomfortable? So you would have seen in the original video, the stock chassis gets up to about 47 degrees Celsius when rendering, so under a large load. And then once the machine has been modded, this actually increases by about 10 degrees to anywhere from 55 to 58 degrees Celsius right on the back here where the heat sink is located. So in terms of using the modded M1 MacBook Air on your lap and just general day-to-day -day usage, I noticed zero changes when I was just using the MacBook for light tasks, such as browsing or watching YouTube videos or sending emails, for example. The MacBook stays basically cold to touch the entire time. I barely notice it's warm at all. The only time you're going to notice the increased heat is if you're rendering something or you're playing a game. And that means that the laptop is going to be generating a lot of heat which you will then feel even more so because of the mod. Now, of course, if you are using the modded MacBook on a table, whether it's glass, wood, or whatever, you won't notice it at all. And nine times out of 10, if I am doing any kind of serious gaming or editing or whatever, it's going to be on a table and it's not gonna be on my lap. So I really don't notice any increased heat when the laptop is not under load. I also tested it with a cooling fan and I really didn't find any kind of noticeable difference. So for those of you wanting to make some kind of Frankenstein MacBook with a big cooler strapped on with the mod, it's not really gonna work the way you think. Now I did have some people express concerns about the battery. So what the mod does essentially is it draws all of the heat away from the CPU and the GPU and distributes it into the chassis. So obviously the chassis is aluminum, so it's a very good conductor of heat. And what this does is the battery is obviously located around here. And people were thinking that I would fry my battery in a month because of the increased heat. So number one, no, that's not going to happen. A, because obviously the heat is only really increased around the CPU, which is up the top, and the battery is located down towards the bottom of the MacBook. And secondly, I'm not rendering on this thing 24 seven or gaming. I'd say I probably only spend about two or 3% of my time using this Mac where it's actually quite hot. So there's really not a big risk of the battery overheating from this mod in my personal opinion. That being said, if you are doing a lot of gaming or rendering where the laptop is constantly hot, I wouldn't recommend this mod because it probably isn't good for longevity. So moving on to performance gains, I noticed a fairly significant gain in two areas, rendering videos and gaming. So if I'm rendering a video, I noticed about a 15 to 20% increase in render times, but this was mainly for shorter renders. Now I did do a comparison to the MacBook Pro and I was able to essentially match the performance of the MacBook with this modded M1 Mac. Now, I think the main reason for this is because with the mod applied, 
this thing is able to extract heat straight away. It doesn't sort of build up in the chassis. And that gives it about a one minute head start on the M1 MacBook Pro before the actual fans on the Pro kick in and do the exact same thing. Now under sustained performance, the MacBook Pro will do better because obviously it has that fan concentrated on the GPU and CPU heatsink, and that's going to extract more hot air than a simple thermal mod will do. So let's talk about cost and complexity. How expensive and how difficult is it to do this mod? So in terms of cost, it's relatively cheap. It's only about 20 to 30 bucks to actually buy the thermal pads. And then obviously all you need to do at that point is get open the chassis and peel back the protective covering on the thermal pads and apply them onto the CPU and the GPU heatsink. You don't need any kind of crazy tool, just a T5 Torx screw to actually get the back chassis of the MacBook open, but that's basically it. It only took me about 10 minutes to do, so if this is your first time opening up a MacBook and doing anything on the inside, it might take you a little bit longer, but nothing too crazy. There's really not much to screw up because this is such a simple mod. Now, I've had quite a few comments basically getting angry at Apple and saying, why didn't Apple include this at the manufacturing stage? Why wasn't the M1 MacBook Pro designed with this from the get-go? Well, the answer is really simple, and that's just it gets too hot. It gets way too hot for lap use. You're not exactly gonna burn yourself, but if you have your hand or thigh on the back of that Mac while it's rendering something at close to 60 degrees Celsius. It might take 15 to 20 seconds, but your skin will get some kind of contact burn. So Apple definitely does not want to be liable for anything like this, which is why from the get-go, they did not include this. And that's why it was designed the way it is. Yes, you will lose about 10 to 15% of the performance, but then the actual back chassis of the Mac will remain relatively cool even when under a heavy load, such as rendering 4K or 8K video. So would I recommend this particular mod? Well, yes and no, it really does depend. So first of all, the warranty. Is this going to void the warranty? That's a tough question because technically you're not really changing anything and it is reversible, which I'll be doing in a separate video. All you have to do to reverse the mod is open the chassis up peel off the pads and you're back to stock. So there's really not anything too intrusive going on with this mod. That being said, if anything does happen to your Mac, there's zero guarantee that Apple is gonna see it like that. They're probably gonna say no and reject your claim for warranty in my opinion, because at the end of the day, you have opened up the back chassis of the Mac and you have added thermal pads where Apple has not. Now, if you're cool with that, or you don't mind going out and buying a brand new MacBook if something does happen and Apple does reject your warranty claim, by all means, go ahead and do it. At least try it. Like I said, it is totally reversible. If you're the type of person who does a little bit of rendering here and there, and maybe a bit of gaming every now and then, and you want to squeeze a little bit more performance out of your base model M1 MacBook Air, and you're not too fussed about a little bit of extra heat on the back chassis, go ahead and do it, try it. It's a fun mod to do, it's quite cool. And at the end of the day, you don't have to keep it, you can just remove it. Now, if you are worried about the increased heat and its effect on battery life and longevity, I wouldn't worry about it too much. Like I said before, I didn't really notice any huge issues. My battery life is exactly the same. The health is still quite high, I think it's like 99%. And this is after over six months of using this MacBook every day for anywhere between eight to 10 hours. But again, like I said before, if you're really smashing this laptop with gaming or rendering and it's gonna be constantly hot, you know, for hours and hours a day, I probably would not do this mod. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching this video. Hopefully you found it interesting. Again, I'll link all of my other M1 MacBook Air mod videos down in the description below. If you wanna see any more videos on this topic, including actually reversing the mod and seeing if there's any kind of leftovers from the mod that a genius might be able to detect, let me know down below. But apart from that, I'll catch you guys in the next one.